Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome today. Welcome to this word. I'm Jason here. And today I'm going to be speaking on missing the call of God or missed calls. You, you see, this is very important in your life for you to know what God has called you to do and how to continue fulfilling that call which you are called uh, by the Lord to do. If you miss doing what the Lord has asked you to do, even uh, your main purpose, your main call, or along the way in fulfilling your call, it's not good for you and it's not good for many other people. So we got to see, we're going to look at a few people here, a big three people in the Bible, and we're going to look at how these people uh, missed uh, their call. Uh, some ultimately missed their total call, uh, even though they were put in that position. Because you're called, remember, you're put in that place by the Lord. He's the one who calls you and then you respond to it. But I want to show you because a missed call is where someone already knows that they've been called. They're coming into the call of God. But maybe in the actual place where they ought to be, they miss it. Or along the way in doing what they're supposed to do, they make some mistakes and they miss the call. Okay, and ultimately some even miss the full-time calling and they, they are out of the, the position and they're replaced. So I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to fulfill what the Lord has called you to do and to know what to do, when to do, how to do it. And if you make a mistake or miss, what should you do? Okay. It's just like a phone call. You know, you can get a phone call. Someone gives you a place, gives you a position. You know, that's your role. That's your place. That's your position. Then along the way, there's communication which has to keep flowing so that you can do what you are supposed to do in that position where you've been put in that office in the kingdom of God. But if you miss calls, there's a break in communication along the way. You make some mistakes. It tends to get you in the wrong way. You end up doing something wrong uh, of a project when you're supposed to be doing something else. Okay. It's like some people, uh, they when they are called of the Lord, they think they are called for something when they're actually not called for that thing. Okay. That's like the main call. But I want us to see, you're going to learn as we look at these individuals. We'll see the mistakes they made and the good things they did so that we can see what we should also do in our life in answer to this call of the Lord. Okay, so the first person which I've picked is probably one who was the most disastrous in, in fulfilling his call. So we're going to look at him. So I can call him, he's the worst of, of the three, and that is going to be King Saul. There's something which King Saul did, some things which he did, which caused him to miss his calling along the way and ultimately had him missing his overall call and he was removed. From his actual position which he was called to be that was king of israel okay so let's have a look at that let's go to first samuel chapter number 13 right now you've got to understand that the lord did not plan for israel to have a king he was their king but they rejected him as king and then the lord had to speak to samuel and say give the people a king because the people wanted a king they wanted to be like other nations so that's already a, a thing where you can see it's a problem where somebody wants things to be done like how other people do it instead of how God does it because God said I'm your king you see that so you have to see in your life maybe in the world there's a certain system in which they make things happen but in the kingdom of God there's a certain way so you have to accept that way don't try and follow things uh, some theories or some ways of doing things which man does follow God's way so that's one of the main things you got to understand uh, in answering and fulfilling your call is do it how God wants you to do it. You understand that? Do it His system. Even if it's never been done before, no one has ever successfully done it, but if it's how God wants it done, do it that way. Don't try and change the Lord to fit your, to fit into your, your, your own little pocket or your own stuff, which is what the children of Israel did. And we saw what happened with King Saul. Okay, he came in. He was a man, head and shoulders above the rest. The Lord chose him called him, met with the prophet, the prophet prophesied, this is what's going to happen, God's going to give you another heart, because he's anointed you, he's chosen you for, to be ruler over his people, and King Saul was doing quite okay, he stepped in, we weren't told anything that he did wrong, but I wanted you to see what happened, where he missed his call, he missed it along the way, two things which we're going to look at, let's go, First Samuel chapter 13 verse number 8, now this time Saul had been king for two years, so he had been in office, he had been ruling for two years. Let's see what happened. Verse number seven. Okay, let's, uh, we said from verse number eight, right? Okay, so this was King Saul. It says, And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So here what took place is that the king was waiting for Samuel to do what he needed to do. And Samuel told uh, King Saul, I'll be there at such and such a time after uh, it was seven days, said here. 
But now it seemed like the prophet was delayed. So King Saul did something which he was not meant to do. Let's read and find out. And he turned seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offerings. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offerings, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. Now look at this. Saul was a king. He was not meant to give any offerings to the Lord. But he became impatient and he was tired of waiting for the prophet. The prophet said, I'll be here on this day. Wait for me on this day. And the day had not yet ended. But King Saul said, just bring the offerings. I'll offer them myself. He was not called to do that. He missed his call. His call was to be king and ruler over the people not to give offerings unto the Lord. It was not his call. It was not his place. It was not his position. It was the position of the priest, of the prophet of God. And look at what happened. As soon as he finished doing what was wrong, which he was not meant to do, this is when the prophet appeared. So the prophet was on time. Verse 11. And Samuel said, What have you done? And Saul said, Because I saw the people were scattered. So look at this. Saul was seeing what the people were doing. So in your call, don't be moved by what you see happening amongst people. Stick with principles. This is a point which you can, which you can grab right here. Stick with the principle. Stick with what the Lord wants you to do. Stick in your position. Stick in your call. Don't go against what you're supposed to do. Your place. Know your place. Know what you're meant to do. If you are meant to be a worshiper, do the worship. Do the worship. Don't now try and prophesy when God has not called you to, to do that. I'm not saying you cannot prophesy, but don't try and assume that role of a prophet or of a preacher if you are called as a musician. You can encourage people with scriptures, but don't now come and think you are a preacher. You will mess up your call. You will be missing your call in the wrong place. In as much as you desire to do it, understand where God has put you. King Saul was seeing the people being scattered. So he was like, people are going away. They're leaving. It's meant to be time for offering. Let me just do the offer. That's what he said here. He said, when, when the prophet said to him, what have you done? He said, I, because I saw the people were scattered. So it's like he saw people were leaving. So at times maybe in your call, you see like no one is responding to what you're doing. And someone else has to come in to do something. And you are impatient. Because there's two things here. Saul was impatient. He was meant to wait for the prophet to do what he had to do. He couldn't wait. And he missed his call. Not only did he not wait, but he reveals to us why he couldn't wait. He was looking at the reaction of the people. So remember, like I said to you, in this thing of your call, where sometimes people miss their call, we can write that one down, is where they look at the people. They look at what the people are saying. People are saying, oh, I don't really think you're supposed to do that. And then somebody reacts and starts doing something differently. No. What did the Lord say you should do? That's what you should do. Don't miss your call. What did he say you should do? That's what you should do. He speaks to everyone individually differently. So King Saul missed it. He said, I saw the people were scattering from me, and you came not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. You did wrong. You are not supposed to do that. It's not your place. It's not your position. Wait for the one who is meant to do that to do it. You stick in your lane. Do your own thing. This is how the calling of God is. Don't try and do something which you're not called to do. Focus on where you are called to do and what you are called to do. Only. Don't try and do more or do less because of the people or anything. This way King Saul missed. Right. Verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now would the Lord have established your kingdom upon Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. The Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people. Because you have not kept that which the Lord commanded you. So first thing, King Saul tried to be a priest. He tried to be a priest, yet he was a king. He tried to do, he disobeyed. Uh, the prophet in waiting for the prophet to come and then 
he tried to do what the prophet was meant to do. He's like, okay, things are not happening here. We know that's supposed to be someone's duty, but oh, what the heck, I can't be waiting. People are leaving. And then you do it. It's like maybe there's a wedding ceremony that's supposed to take place, and now guests start to leave because the, the, the wedding uh, officer hasn't pitched up, and someone just comes up and says, okay, I'll do it. No, that's fraud. You're being fraudulent. You're not called to do that. It's not your purpose. Stick to your place. Stick to your place, child of God. Stick to your calling. Don't try and do something which you know you're not called to do. If it's someone else's role, wait for that person to do it. And you just do your part. Once you do what you are called to do, that's fine. That's what the Lord wants. He doesn't want you. Remember, if I can tell you one thing, only do what the Lord has told you to do. Don't do too much and don't do too little. Just do what he has asked you to do. And you'll be well. You'll be fine. Okay. So he didn't know his place and he looked at the people. And for that those two reasons, three reasons, his impatience, him doing what he's, not, what he's not called to do, because of three, looking at the people. Those three reasons, he said from there, he had been king for just two years. He said, the Lord would have established your kingdom forever. Meaning his son and his son's sons, the whole lineage would, would uh, have that royalty upon them. But he said, because of that, it stops with you. So already his children, Jonathan and the rest of them, they were out of it because of that. Why? Because it's so important to know your place. You can see certain things with the Lord. Someone will be like, oh, he didn't kill anyone. He didn't do anything. Others have done worse sins. No, this was worse because he went against his ultimate purpose. That's what you have to understand. Let's see the other thing uh, which King Saul did where he made a mess up. You, this time he was given a direct instruction, right? First Samuel chapter 15. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up to Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So, you can see what the king was told this time. Go and destroy these guys. Destroy everything about them. Uh, the Lord just didn't want them there. They were bad people. This is what we can see. And then let's see. The Lord gave Saul, of course, favor to go and win the battle. Then let's see what happened in verse number 8. And he took... Okay, let's take from verse 7. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refuse that they utterly destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came unto Samuel, saying, It repents me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Samuel did the all night prayer for this disobedient king. Already this king did a major mess up, trying to do something he is not called to. He tried to offer, he was offering the, the offerings, which was the role of the priest. Now here he was told, to destroy the enemies, destroy everything. But he kept some stuff back. And he still kept the king alive. And the Lord saw it and he said, No, I'm now, I'm now uh, sad and sorrowful that I actually chose him to be king. Because he's not doing what I asked him to do. And the prophet still prayed for him all night. Then something happened. Verse 13. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said unto him, Blessed be you of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What means then this bleating of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen, to sacrifice unto the Lord your God, and the rest were utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay on, and I'll tell you what the Lord said to me this night. And he said unto him, Stay on. And Samuel said, When you were little in your own sight, were you not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a journey and said, Go utterly destroy. The Lord said, Go utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. He says, 
Wherefore then did you not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord? So he flied upon the spoil. That means that he saw these are nice things. I can't destroy them. God told him, said, destroy all those things. He said, wait a second, this looks nice and shiny. These are some diamonds. Maybe that thing was used in the witchcraft or whatever sacrifices. He was told to destroy. But he looked, he said, oh, this is nice. Even the people were looking, oh, this is such a nice fat cow. We can eat this meat. How can we destroy it? What a waste. But they were told to destroy. So the people and the king, they looked at the nice things and said, this, this is too nice to destroy. But the Lord said, destroy it. But they said, this is too nice to, we, we can keep these things. This is a nice, it's just a nice, it's a nice movie. It's a nice song. I can just keep listening to it. It's not a problem. You know, it's a nice beat, a nice song. The words are not that bad, but if the Lord says, don't listen to any music from that person, then don't listen to any music from that person. You understand that? Don't watch those kind of movies. Then don't watch them. Don't be like, oh, but it looks nice. This is what the king did. Right? And verse 20, And Saul said to, unto Samuel, Yea, we have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent us, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. So now... The king was trying to justify what he did wrong. So when you make a mistake and you miss something, don't try and justify yourself. If the Lord said, do this, don't try and justify. But it's like now you're saying, Jesus, you're Lord of my life, but I have some advice for you. I think you need to do this. I don't think that's wise. <laughs> the Lord doesn't need any counselors. You understand? If he wants to hear something from your point of view, you'd ask him. But if he's Lord, God, and King, then what he says is what we should do. That way you will not miss your call. Don't try and negotiate when the Lord says, do this, and then you try and say, okay, I'll do this, but I'll do that. Then I'll explain why I didn't do everything he said. This is what the king was doing. Very bad. Very bad. Very bad. All right? Verse 21. But the people took the spoil, the sheep, the oxen, and the chief of the things, which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord, your God. In Gilgal, in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. So now this king, first of all, he said, we did everything which the Lord asked us to do. We did it. And now when the prophet explains to him, obedience is better than sacrifice. Isn't it? He said, it's like, let's read it again he said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft so it's like your disobedience is rebellion to the lord it's like witchcraft it's like idolatry which is exactly what it was because first of all he was doing offerings which he was not meant to do it was the role of the priest now this time what does the what does uh, king saul do again he keeps the best things and he says oh well it's for the lord it's to sacrifice to the lord so he was in there i believe there's a bit of deceit because they saw these things were nice and they were keeping them back. I'm sure they kept some for themselves. But they're saying it's to sacrifice to the Lord. And the prophet said, obedience is better than sacrifice. So this is what you need to understand in your call. Remember I said to you that when the Lord has called you, you only do what he has told you to do. Don't try and do extra. Don't try and do less. Because you think you're getting extra points or you're getting extra favor by doing more. No, you only burn yourself out and you actually displease the Lord because you're rebelling. If he says go 10 meters, don't try and go 100. You see this. Do what he tells you to do. It's not about sacrificing. It's like how some people will give and give so much, but they can't do the simple thing of paying a tithe, giving an offer. But they sacrifice over and over. But they're not doing the basics. Stick to the basics and you'll be blessed and you'll be well. Okay? So he missed it. And now when the prophet said, God has rejected you from being king. So now his call was taken back from him. Already earlier he had been told that the kingdom is out of your hand. But now this time he was told, God has rejected you from being king. So that is where now his call, the power of his call. He was being told, you, your calling is lost. So I don't want you to miss your call where I don't want you to miss calls from God. Don't miss instructions from the Lord along the way where you ultimately 
lose your position, which he called you to, to be in. You lose that, that role, that power. You still have all that skill and ability, but you've been removed out. It means your life is not going to last very long. Isn't it? So he said, look at this. He said, I feared the people. Again, fearing the people. So we can see that to obey is better than sacrifice. And don't fear the people. Don't fear the people. So this guy already, the first time he didn't know his place, he missed his call. He tried to do what he was not supposed to do. He listened, uh, he was afraid that the people were leaving him, and then he missed his call. So don't do your things based on how people react. Do what you're supposed to do based on what God wants, not based on how people react or whether people think it's a good idea or a bad idea. Okay, and this, this was just a total miss now. And he, he was impatient as well the first time. Now the second time, total disobedience, it was total disobedience, total, total, total dis disobedience. He did what he thought would please the people. He even said it. He said, I, I feared the people. So it's more important to fear God than to fear man. Like Jesus said, the Pharisees, they loved the praise of man more than the praises of God. You see, they love to be seen to be doing something good. So at times you're called, you, can, you might have to do something which is not going to please everybody. But you have to fulfill that part. You understand this? Because if you're just doing it to, from the start, from the small things, if you, just, if you do small things to please people, look at this. The king, the earlier time, he was moved because of people walking away. Now this time, he actually listened to the people. And look, it gets worse as he went on. Because he said, pardon my sin. Now he says, forgive my sin. I did it because of the people. Instead of saying, I'm totally wrong and repenting, he was still trying to justify himself, saying it's because of the people. Verse 26, And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord. Okay, verse 25, he had said, Now therefore I pray you, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. So he was like, come and still stand with me, prophet. And he said, no, I'm not going to come and stand with you, because you've rejected the word of the Lord. So to reject the word of the Lord, it means you are rejecting Jesus. You are crucifying Jesus a second time. You reject Jesus, you're rejecting your mercy. It's like you're trying to justify the wrong you've done. If you made a mistake and you missed it, repent quickly and receive mercy and grace to run again. You understand that? But if you continue to try and justify yourself, you're crucifying Jesus a second time uh, and you're trying to say that you are right. You're not accepting his mercy. You're not accepting his forgiveness. You're trying to say what you did was okay because this is what he was trying to do. He said, no, the Lord has rejected you from being king of Israel. Verse 27, And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and he tore. So look at this. Now the king, he didn't want the prophet to go and he held his, his mantle. And he says that he tore. And look at this. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord has rent, that means torn. The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day and has given it to your neighbor, to a neighbor of yours that is better than you. So it was now declared, your calling is out. You have been removed. He said that action of the tearing, that's why certain things which happen in life, they are prophetic actions. So you need to see, if you see it spiritually, the prophet saw it spiritually, he says, you've torn my, my mantle. It means that the Lord has torn, he has torn the kingdom out of your hand. Look at this. And he said, and okay, that was for a word for Israel. But then verse 30, the Saul said again, then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now. Look at this. The king says, I have sinned. Yet honor me now, I pray you, before the elders of my people, this is verse 30, and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord your God. Look at this. He said the, the king is more worried about the people. He's just saying you, you, you've lost your kingship. You've lost your calling. But instead of him quickly saying, oh, please let my kingship be restored, or forgive me, Lord, I disobeyed your word. He's, he's not even saying that. He's just saying, okay, I've sinned, I've made a mistake. Now come and come with me in front of the people. He was wanting the prophet more to be with him in front of the people. That's what's so bad about uh, this king. So turn again with me that I may worship the Lord your God. He said, before the elders of my people. So here the king clearly showed that he was more concerned about what people would think. The prophet just gave him a prophetic word telling him, your call has been removed. And he couldn't repent and say, please, Restore my calling. Can't I remain as king? Forgive me for what I've done. Ask the Lord. Entreat the Lord what I should do. No. He said, come with me, please, to worship 
the Lord in front of the elders. That was what was his concern. So don't be like that. Even when you, whenever if you make a mistake, don't be still turning back to say, what will people say? Make right with the Lord. Hallelujah. Get back in running in the, in the right path. And then verse 31, so Samuel turned again after Saul and Saul worshipped the Lord. And then Samuel said, bring ye hither to me King Ahag, and he killed King Ahag, right? He said, bring ye King Ahag, the king of Amalekites, and Agag came unto him delicately, right? And Samuel had him removed, had that king killed, okay? So, your call, be patient, if we can learn something from the mistakes of King Saul. How he missed his call, he was impatient. He was concerned on what people were thinking, how people were reacting to his call, and he tried to do something he was not called to do. And then he totally went against the word of the Lord when he re and he listened to the people. He tried to please people. They said, let's keep the sacrifices. He tried to do something to please God, which God didn't want. Trying to bring a sacrifice. God doesn't want the sacrifices. He wants, his, he wants obedience first. Not like he doesn't accept sacrifices, but he wants obedience first. Okay? Obedience is the most important thing. So just do what the Lord tells you. Don't try and do many other things because you will not be able to sustain it. When you're not called to do that thing, you will not sustain it. You will fall. You will fall by the side. He knows what you can sustain. Stick with what he's called you to do and sustain that. The other things, don't try and, and, and do extra, you know, to try and get extra points. Right? Very important. Right? And now the next person I want us to look at is Moses. So first example uh, this guy failed. He was removed from his call. He missed his call and he was totally removed from his call. So don't be like King Saul. Okay? It's like where someone can insist that they are called to a certain office in the kingdom. Like everyone wants to be a prophet. You know, I think it's, I don't know if it's the glory that comes with it. Apostle, prophet. No one really loves to be called a pastor. But they want to say, I am called prophet post you see they were all bishop whatever it is they want the higher the higher names if you're called for that office it's fine when the lord tells you now go with that title run with that thing then run with it you you, you understand what i'm saying but don't be caught up because it's so dangerous that you can be like king saul trying to be an imposter trying to be something that you're not if you're called as a pastor be a pastor doesn't mean you can't prophesy you can still prophesy but function in your call because when you miss your call is when you go around with something which is not what you're called to be. Or maybe you call yourself a pastor, but you actually call, you know you're called as a prophet. And don't be moved by what people say, because people can tell you you're this, you're that. They can tell you all kinds of things, what you're calling is. Ah, you are my pastor, or you are my bishop, or you are the apostle. You, God has called you as this. No, did that person call you? They did not call you. The calling, remember, is from the Lord. Understand what you are called to do and walk in it. Don't be lifted up because at times you can be lifted up by people with a title and whatever. It's not about what people say you are or who people say you are. It's about what the Lord has called you to be. That's what matters. You understand this? Don't be like King Saul. Maybe when King Saul was doing the offerings, people were like, ah, go for it. You are also a man of God. You're also anointed. Give the peace offerings. God will understand. No, don't do that. Stick to your call. Don't miss it. If you call into business, run with it in business. Run with it. Don't miss and say, okay, now let me explain something about callings as we're going. Some people have got multi-dimensional callings. You can be called to minister and to business and to whatever else. It's a calling. It's just, it's your place. It doesn't change. It's different to like a career, which is a skill which can be developed. Here is what God has positioned you for. He's given you the traits to do it, whether if it's for TV or whatever, uh, the arts. It's something in you and it sticks with you. It can be multidimensional. It's not like one thing to say, okay, you only stick in this box, you are just pasta. Or you only stick here, you are just for business. No, you can be for business and you can be for something else. It's important. Ask the Lord, what is my core? You see this? But there will be your main primary core. But don't mix it. Uh, don't, don't, don't try and be in some way where you're not supposed to be. Now we're going to look at Moses. Okay, so let's look at Moses. Moses, the Bible speaks of him in an amazing way in an amazing way he was such a powerful man of god uh, and he did so many things but let's see what was his actual call he was called to take the people of israel 
out of Egypt and to take them into the promised land. That's what the Lord had said. That was the purpose. That's why the Lord called him. He said, Moses, go to Pharaoh, tell him, let my people go, and I'm going to take them into a land flowing with milk and honey, which I will show you. I will be with you. Isn't it? Exodus 33, verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, you and the people which you have brought up out of the land of Egypt. So now he had taken them out of Egypt. He says, Unto the land which I swore unto Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying unto your seed, I will give it. Isn't it? Verse 3, Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up. Uh, now he was giving a rebuke to the people. Right? But he said, if you understand it, verse number 1, he said that you've taken them out to take them in. So Moses, what his calling was to take the people of God out of Egypt into the promised land. But something happened along the way. So Moses understood his call. He answered his call. He was walking in his call in such great frustration with people, who, you know, who were stiff-necked, hard-hearted. They didn't want to obey God, but Moses was patient with them. The Bible even says something about Moses. Let's read that. Numbers chapter 12, verse number 3. So you can understand this was a man who, from the time when the Lord called him, he, he just didn't miss it. He would even entreat the Lord every time. And I, I believe it was God just showing his mercy. He was showing his mercy there uh, through Moses. Because every time the Lord would say, I'm going to wipe these people out. And Moses would go and say, no, but you are good for your mercy in Jesus forever. Don't do that. It's not who you are. The, the people will say that you brought out these people, you couldn't take them into the land, then you destroy them in the desert. And Moses would always say that, and then the Lord would change. But if you understand the truth, the Lord actually didn't change. He was just trying to give Moses a revelation to see, does Moses know who I am? And the Bible even says, Moses spoke with the Lord face to face as a man speaks with a man. You see that? He even rebuked Miriam and Aaron when they just spoke about his marriage, which uh, it wasn't right. The marriage wasn't right, but because they spoke about it, the Lord came and said, Wait, how are you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Amen. They were just commenting about it. So Moses was quite uh, a man of God. Numbers 12 verse 3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So, and he was also humble. Meek means humble. It says he was the most humble man on the earth. See this. Moses was the most humble man on the earth. So he's someone I believe that in correction, you know, following the things of God. Even when you see through Exodus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, all this, you can see that Moses, what the Lord would say, you do it, you do it, you do it. But remember, his ultimate call was what? Take the people out of bondage into the promised land. Something happened along the way. This humble man, slow to anger. Imagine the Lord would be like, I'm going to wipe them out. Moses would be like, no. Don't wipe them out. So Moses was humble. He was the most humble. He was very slow to, to anchor. He was a quiet guy, you can see. But something happened along the way. Let's go and see it. Moses made one mistake. I'll show you why that mistake is so big. He made he missed it once and it cost him fulfilling his call. Numbers chapter number 20. Right? Verse number 5. This was the people crying to Moses now. Listen to what they said. And they said, Sham uh, Elebradus, verse number four. He said, Why have you brought us up? Why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? This was the people speaking most. And, and wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in to this evil place? It is no place for seed or figs or vines or pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly onto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. So they were in trouble. It's like the people were saying, you told us you're taking us into a land flowing with milk. You promised us all these good things. But we're about to die. There's no fruits here. There's not even water. We're going to die of this. And they went. Look at this. So when along, you can get something good from this. Along your core, turn to the Lord. When people turn against you, you must turn to the Lord. You understand? Turn to the Lord. When people turn against you, turn to the Lord. When people turn against you, turn to the Lord. This is what Moses and Aaron did. 
they were about, the people were like furious. Imagine this was a full nation, millions of people, right? And they were like, okay, you guys, you, your story, we're tired of hearing it. Get us into this promised land. We're about to die. Do something. Okay? And they went, they turned to the Lord. Now something happened. Look at this. Verse 7. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather the assembly, uh, you and Aaron, your brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water. The rock. Calling the rock, he, his water. And you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock. So, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Moses was told to go and speak to the rock. The people were attacking Moses. Moses was taking all the heat. The Lord said to Moses, go and speak to the rock and the people will get water to drink and their beasts. Let's see what did Moses do. Verse number nine. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, you rebels. <laughs> the Lord didn't say, go and speak to the people like that. Look at what, so you can see Moses, I believe he was a bit angry now. Okay? He said, Hear now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. That means he hit the rock, the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank and their beasts also. And the Lord spoke unto Moses. Look at this. There and then. Remember, God spoke to Moses as a man face to face. Moses was angry with the people. He said, you rebels, must we. Now he made a mistake. The Lord said, talk to the rock. But it was now a personal fight. So in your calling, don't get into personal fights with people. To try and prove. Don't get, this is another thing where people miss their calling. They start getting into personal fights to try and prove that God called them and that things will work. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't get into personal fights with people. You know God has called you. Focus on what He's called you to do. The results will come. Don't try and prove it. And don't try and make like as if the miracles and the power is being worked by you. Like what Moses did here, he said, shall we bring water for you from the rock? No, 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 no. It was not you. It was never you. You are being used by the Lord as a representative. So stick to that and you won't miss your call. This cost Moses dearly. Verse number 12. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron, because you believed me not. So it was unbelief. You believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. You know, with the things of God, Jesus said, He who is faithful in little is faithful in much. There's certain things which the Lord can allow to happen and He lets them go. But there's other things where it's like, okay, that is a break. Even in the New Testament, understand this, even under grace, there's something where it's like, okay, now it's now enough. And you remove. Look at Judas. Judas kept stealing money, stealing money all along. But there's a point in time where the Lord said, now it's enough. My mercy is departed. And Judas went, sold Jesus. He didn't even see the cross. If he, if he had mercy, if the Lord still wanted to show him mercy, he could have seen the cross. And even though he betrayed Jesus, he could have been saved. But he killed himself and he died even before Jesus died. He didn't even see salvation. He didn't even see the price being paid for him on the cross. Very sad. So God, certain things, he doesn't let them go. And this is what happened here. You understand it? This is exactly what happened here. Moses now... And Aaron were told, you are not going to take this congregation into the promised land. So he was saying to them, you will not fulfill the ultimate call which I called you to do. I wanted you to do all this. Remember, King Saul was told, you are going to be king forever. But now the kingdom is going to end. Then he did something wrong again and said, okay, now you're just no more going to be king at all. That's when David came up, right? So it means King Saul's life was cut short. He died before his time because he missed his call. Even Moses and Aaron died before their time. Because something happened. Look at this. Later on, right? He said, um, you won't take these people into the land. Verse, verse 13. That this is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. So there was a strife. There was a quarrel. And they didn't make it in. Verse number 24. This is when Aaron, unfortunately, he passed away. First, not even long. Moses continued for a bit longer. 
Verse 24. Uh, this was the Lord, what he spoke to Moses. He said, And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Remember what he said to King Saul? Uh, rebellion is like witchcraft and idolatry. Rebellion. Disobedience to the Lord. So what Moses and Aaron had done on disobeying what the Lord said was seen as idolatry. It's likened to idolatry and witchcraft. Because it was rebellion. Moses was pointing praise at himself. So in your call, remember, never take the praise. Don't take the praise. Yes, people can praise you. I'm not saying don't accept uh, when people praise you. But never try and glorify yourself when it's actually the Lord who ought to be glorified. He said, because you rebelled against my word, verse 25, he said, take Aaron and Eleazar, his son, and bring them up onto Mount Hall and strip Aaron of his garments. That's his righteousness. That's his position. That's his role. He said, and put them upon Eliezer his son, and Aaron shall be gathered unto his people and shall die there. So Aaron, right there and then, he was removed. And the people mourned for him for 30 days. And then Moses was told something just before when they were getting into the promised land. Can you imagine how many years, I believe it was 40 years, Moses struggled dealing with those people in uh, the wilderness to get them into the promised land dealing with all that, dealing with wars and everything, and he doesn't enter the promised land. The Lord said this to him, Deuteronomy 32, from verse number 48, right? Look at what he said to Moses. He said, And the Lord spoke unto Moses the selfsame day, saying, Get you up onto this mountain, Abarim, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for possession, and die in the mountain, whether you go up and be gathered unto your people, as Aaron your brother died in Mount Hall and was gathered unto his people, because you trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah, Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because you sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. You shall see the land before you, but you shall not go in the, onto the land which I shall give unto the children of Israel. You see that? So disobeying God is a, is a serious thing, you know. I didn't hear if Moses repented at that point in time. Maybe you are still angry or the Lord was like, no. It was under the Old Testament, remember, so there wasn't much room uh, as we have now. But Moses did so many amazing things, great things. But look at that. Just have a look at that. Psst, one thing, striking the rock twice. But the revelation is that when he struck the rock the first time, that was the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The second time he was meant to speak to the rock because the rock is Christ. Remember, I read for you and he even said, he, when he spoke of the rock, he said, he shall give, bring you water out. Okay, someone is saying, what, where did you get that from? Let's go back. Numbers chapter 20, when the Lord gave the instruction. Remember, it says that that rock is Christ, isn't it? So when he struck the rock twice, he was crucifying Jesus a second time. You see that? So, don't forsake your own mercy. You remember we, last week we dealt with running from the call of God, Jonah, his prayer. One of his prayers, when he, I mean his prayer, sorry, part of his prayer was, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. So that's like where you reject Jesus. So it was a sign of someone rejecting Jesus. It's like how so, instead of him saying to the prophet, please entreat the Lord for me, go and pray to God. I've missed it. Instead, he said, please come with me in front of the people so that the people think I'm still okay. That was the point. Okay. Right. I want to show you that Numbers 20 where he said the rock is he. The Lord said, take the rod, gather you the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother, and speak you unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. The rock shall give his water. Okay. So there's something in there. But anyway, in the New Testament, it's more clear. It says, they all, did all drink of that rock, and that rock is Christ. Okay. So that's what happened. The Lord wanted to bring the revelation. Then in the Old Testament, it was about the, the flesh, you see, the hitting. But now, it's about speaking. You understand? The New Testament, it's about speaking. You're showing a revelation, but Moses missed it. So it was a big thing. And the key thing he said, you rebel. That's rebellion. Rebellion, going against what the Lord tells you to do. So in your core, don't rebel. Don't go against what the Lord said. It was Moses and it's anger. If you look at it, because Moses went and he said, you rebels, stick to what God says. 
You know, I see it many times. At times I've been in services and sorry to say, but that preacher man will be releasing his anger and frustration upon the people. Half of the message is the Spirit of God speaking. Half of the message is him telling people what he thinks about them. You know, you don't go and preach people. Preach the cross of Jesus Christ. Okay. So Moses here, instead of preaching, uh, I can say, even say, instead of him declaring the cross, speaking to the rock, he came and said, you rebels, you see. Once you see finger pointing from the pulpit, some of you here, some of you are like this, some of you like that. You are missing your call, preacher. You are there to call people onto salvation. <laughs> you know, I remember one time I'll tell you, okay, the Lord said I can't tell that joke. I'll tell it next time. The true story though. Hallelujah. I must obey. Obedience better than sacrifice. Just pray, maybe you give me grace to share it. Okay, it's a funny one. But you understand that Moses was angry, man. He was angry. So don't be angry. If you're angry, you can miss your call. I want to show you Ecclesiastes, powerful scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter number, before we get to the last person who I'm going to speak to you about, let's go to Ecclesiastes number seven. So do not, um, do not get angry with people. And don't try and make like it's your power. It's God's power that's working. Ecclesiastes 7, verse number 8. It says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So Moses was someone who was humble. He was patient in spirit. Right? Verse number 9. It says, Be not hasty in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. But Moses became angry. He was so humble. I guess that's why the Lord chose him. He was so slow to anger. But at that point in time, he cracked. He was fed up. He said, you rebels, must I give you, must we bring you water? So he was like, he's trying to show them, he said, okay, it's me versus you. I'm going to show you something now. We are never, your call is never against the people who we are, who we are called to help. Always realize that. Because you can become frustrated. The enemy uses, uses uh, the people who you are meant to help at times. To frustrate you so you begin to hate them no you have to continue to love the saints love the flock of god love even your workers in the workplace if you call into business love your family which you are called to save love your children this is the calling of god remember john chapter 13 this is the 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 way all the the, the greater commandment isn't it love you love god with everything and your neighbor as yourself isn't it? that's the new commandment jesus said he has to love others as he loved his disciples that's what he said to them do that and you'll be well don't allow anger. Don't allow anger. Rebellion, remember, is like witchcraft. Moses, that was sin. That was a rebellion. One small thing. You'd be like, hey, that's tough. Yeah, but with the Lord, he said, faithful little, faithful in much. So he knew that Moses could do it again. An error. Okay, the last person. So Moses, we can say he, he answered his call. He was walking in his call almost, but he missed it. He didn't ultimately fulfill his full purpose. He missed his ultimate call. King Saul ultimately uh, totally missed his call and totally was removed from his position. Moses, he was walking in his call, but he didn't ultimately fulfill it. He didn't get into the promised land. You see this. But now we have King David. King David, many people think he was much worse than King Saul. I know he was not because there's very few points where I see King David directly disobeying what the Lord said and trying to justify himself. You see that? Or trying to give himself praise in front of people instead of giving the praise to the Lord, like what I believe uh, sorry, Moses did. You understand this? Okay. Let's look at some of the misses of David and what happened after. The first miss of David was with the Ark of the Covenant. That's the presence of the Lord. Now remember David, the Lord said, uh, was a man after his own heart. He's the one who replaced, replaced King Saul. Let's go to 2 Samuel. Praise the Lord. Chapter number 6. Hallelujah. David's story is so big and so deep that uh, we can do series upon series about him. But today we're just going to touch on these three points. Okay, with him. Okay. So, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6. Let's take it from verse number two. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal to Judah to bring up thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubim. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in 
Gibeah, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gebir, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all his house of Israel played before the Lord. They were all happy, right? And singing as they were carrying this ark. Verse number six. And when they came to Nashcon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, because the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his terror, and there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased, because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah, and he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come with me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertains to him because of the ark of God. Let's hold it there. Right. King David brought the ark back. Now, he is saying he's going to restore this, the ark. The ark, remember, represents the presence of God. But there's something which David did wrong here. He missed his call. He missed his duty because he put the ark on a cart with oxen and had guys driving the cart with oxen and the, the, the ark of God in the back. You see, so David was ignorant because the ark of God was never meant to be put on a cart and carried with, with oxen. It was meant to be carried upon the shoulder of the priest. So the ignorance of David was a miss of his call. So at times when you're ignorant about the word of God, about how things ought to be done, you can miss your calling. That's why I come and I bring teachings and all this here, so that you have wisdom, knowledge of God, so you do not miss your call. You understand that? Don't miss your call. Ignorance uh, will cause you to make mistakes. So David... He forgot or he was ignorant, whatever happened, but he was ignorant because he did the wrong thing. And now he was afraid of the presence of God. So sometimes you, someone will run from their call, be afraid of what they're called to do because they saw it didn't work. Maybe you didn't follow the right way it's meant to be done. Go and check again in the word and then run again. So it was his ignorance. But then the person who he took the ark from to, because <laughs> he thought, this ark's going to kill people. But the man landed up getting blessed. Then David brought the ark, and this time they carried it. Right? Verse number 12. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they sat, when they that bear the ark of the Lord, see now they were carrying it, had gone six steps, he sacrificed oxen and fatties. So now they were carrying the ark, and as they walked, they gave sacrifices. So you see, David went, I believe he realized, oh my mistake, the ark is not meant to be put on the ox, meant to be carried. So now they were carrying the ark on the shoulder and walking. Okay? So if you're missing your call, don't blame God. Because David was like looking like, God is dangerous, man. His presence is dangerous. I don't understand this. Take this thing away. I can't be. He was angry. He was, he was like... He was like angry against the Lord. It says it displeased him because the Lord made a breach on Uzzah. That's verse 8. I can't really say he was angry, but he was, he was not happy with what uh, he thought was. Why is God killing this guy? But it was because of his ignorance. So now he went and realized, okay, I'm the one who made a mistake. This guy is being blessed. The presence of God blesses. So how come the presence, he was thinking the presence of God has killed someone. How can this be right? It's not right. Take the presence of God away from me. No. Realize what you're supposed to do in the presence of God and how you're supposed to handle the presence of God on the shoulder. That's why in church, lift up your hands in worship. Don't be having your hands down. There's something you'll be realizing. How come others get blessed in the presence? Myself, I don't get blessed. Find out what ought to be done, isn't it? And you answer your call. You won't be missing your call. Now, there's something else. So you get that? If you're ignorant, correct your ignorance. And you will not miss your call. Something else David did. Let's go to 2 Samuel verse number 11. The one which everybody talks about. Everybody talks about. Bathsheba. You know the story? Okay. If you do, let me break it down to you again. Anyway. 2 Samuel 11. It says, And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him 
and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Amnon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem, and it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messages and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived, and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, said, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. Look at this. It says, at the time when kings went to battle, David was at home. You understand this? He was at home. He was meant to be fighting. The king was meant to be fighting. So it shows that in your calling, when you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're meant to be busy with your call, temptation can come. He was meant to be busy fighting wars, but he was at home. And then he sees, at home there's mostly women. The husbands are all gone. They're all fighting in battle, most of them, other than the king's servants. So there's many women there. And now... He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was meant to be out uh, fighting with the, with the rest of the people. It says, when kings go to battle. So, be busy with God's thing. Otherwise, temptation will come. If you are too busy with the things of God, you have no time to be tempted by the devil. You understand that? But this man, David, he missed it here. He, he was meant to be out in battle. Now he slept with someone's wife and he made her pregnant. And now, this is where something happens. So, first of all, one sin led to another. The first sin was he was being lazy. He was meant to be in battle. So don't be lazy. Be busy with what God has called you to do. Don't miss your call. Laziness can cause you to miss your call. Don't be lazy. Laziness can cause you to miss your call. Don't be lazy. He was being lazy. And that led him to become an adulterer. And then that may, led him to, con, to, to plan a whole lot of uh, conspiracy. Right? Verse number six, David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite and Joab sent Uriah unto David. And when David was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house and there followed him a mass of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord and went not down to his house. And when they had told David saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from your journey? Why then did you not go down unto your house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark of Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my own house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as my soul lives, I will not do this thing. Look at this. Uriah, David was trying to butter up Uriah. In fact, he was trying to cover his sin. His plan was, call Uriah here quickly because his wife is pregnant. So if Uriah goes and he's back here, then everyone can say it's Uriah's child. You understand it? He was covering up his sin. So he was bringing him back because people were like, how did she get pregnant when her husband is out in bed? So he brought her, him quickly to say, hey, let him come. Hey, relax guy. He gave him a lot of meat, said, go and enjoy, go and relax with your wife. Uh, relax, you're coming from a journey. And the man did not go. He slept at the door of the palace grounds. You understand? He slept outside by where the servants are. Saying, if the king has called him there, he's ready to do the king's service. He thought the king had called him to do something. He's wondering, all this meat, imagine, gave him all those blessings. So don't be bought. This is what I can say to you. People at times miss their calling by being bought. Someone says, oh, you want to do it like that? Uh, someone with money. Say, um... I think if we do like this, it can be more comfortable for you. Don't you think so? It can work. Do not be bought. David was trying to buy Uriah. Uriah realized his call. He was called to battle. That's when he said to King David, how can I be going and eating at home, sleeping with my wife, playing when it's time for fighting? It's time for fighting, I can't be playing. You see, so at times the, the enemy can use someone to butter you up and give you nice things and gifts to control your call. Never allow your call to be controlled by money. It's manipulation or resources. Just because someone has resources, stick to what you know is right. Don't be moved by resources. Okay? Like Uriah. Don't, Uriah was not moved by resources. He said, I am called to fight. It's time to fight.
David now thought, what am I going to do? Because his wife is expecting. So David was missing his call. And again, what did he do? Verse number 13. And when David had called him, he called Uriah again. He made him eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. So this time David said, okay, let me make this guy drunk, eat, stay by me. So he'll definitely be tired and drunk and go home. And then at least I can say, we don't know what happened. Probably slept his wife, right? He didn't go down. So he didn't go to his house. He still stayed there, even though he was drunk. But somehow his spirit knew, let me stay here. Be ready to serve the king. Verse 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by hand of Uriah. So David was like, let me just send this guy away. And he wrote the letter, but he had a more wicked plan. It was premeditated matter. I'll show you. And he wrote the letter saying, set you, Uriah, in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire you from him that he may be smitten and die. So now David told his army general, Imagine the guy is carrying a letter which is instructing for his own death. <laughs> so you can see how disciplined he was. He didn't open the letter. I believe he didn't open it. He went to deliver it, not knowing that that letter was an instruction for him to be killed to the general. He went did it and the general, he didn't know what was happening. He just said, okay, the king wants this guy gone. That's what he'll do. And he did it. And then the Lord came with Nathan the prophet and explained to David in a parable a wrong that had been done. He said one man had one little sheep and another one had many. And this man with the many sheep and everything went and took the little sheep which this one man had and took it to himself. What should be done to the man? And then David said, the man should be killed. And then the prophet Nathan said, you are that man. And let's see what David said onto that. Because he went and he took Uriah to be his wife. Because soon and soon, the moment that Uriah died, he said, okay, come, she's, I'm now married and she's my wife. He wanted to cover up his adultery. All because he was not busy doing what he was called to do. It caused him to become, uh, to, to even disrupt someone's call, a soldier called to battle. He disrupted someone's call. And then he pre-planned a murder. He lied and he connived just because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was tempted, fell into temptation. If he had just corrected the one sin or the one mistake, the one mistake, but he was getting deeper and deeper into trouble. So someone would probably think, ah, this guy needs to be removed. Let's see what happened, right? Second Samuel 11. Praise the Lord. She mourned for her husband. Zambari Badabaso. Verse number five. Yeah, this was when David responded to the parable he was given. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the, the man. And he said, Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said unto David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you out of the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if it ha that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto you such and such things. Wherefore, thou hast despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and has taken his wife to be your wife and has slain him with the sword of, your, of the children of Amnon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your your wife. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them unto your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. For you did it secretively, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also shall put away your sin. You shall not die. Look at this. The difference between David and Saul. When he made this mistake, first of all, it was not, uh, it was very wrong because the Lord said, you've transgressed my command. But it was not like he went against the instruction of God. Direct instruction. You understand? That's the difference. You see, it wasn't that direct disobeying what God said, even though what he was doing was not right. But look what David did. Immediately he repented. And immediately the prophet Nathan said, you will not die. God has removed your sin. That's why even in the Psalms, we hear of David where he writes, says, remove me from blood, guiltiness, Lord, and all that. And then this child that he had uh, with uh, Bathsheba eventually died. And David fasted and prayed 
that the, to, for the Lord to spare the child's life, even though he was told the child would die. Then when the child died, he continued eating and continued with life as normal. And his servants even asked him, what was wrong with you? You were crying for the child to be saved. Now you are back to life like normal. Then he's like, well, if God would have spared the child, he would have spared. But if he didn't, he didn't. I continue. So you can see David was never, he never held offense towards the Lord. So even when you walk with the Lord, don't hold offense against God. If you, something misses in your call, don't hold offense against God. No offense against God. This is what David had. Even with the ark, he, the ark killed, he thought the ark had killed someone. But when he realized, no, the ark is blessing, he didn't hold it as a defense to say, Lord, but how come you killed a person and you're blessing them? He said, that thing is working, it's blessing people. Bring the presence back to me. He immediately went and take it. Even here, he realized, okay, the child has died. He continued with his life. He had no offense. He went and he worshipped the Lord, in fact, when the child had died. Then one other, let's see, the third one, I showed you the first one, the ark, of, uh, where David made a mistake, ignorance. The second one, this bad one. And then this, what actually happened is God gave him a child with the sheep. the second one, you know who was that child? Solomon, a very wise king. And he says, the Lord even loved Solomon and said, I'll be to him a father and he will be to me a son. And then one other last one, let's look at this, where David he did a, a couple of bad things, but I'm highlighting like the big ones. But I want you to see that as David was missing his call, what he did is what maintained him uh, in his call. You, you get this, that restored him quickly. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 21. David this time, it was again his army general joy. We had to be dealing with this <laughs> issue of David's uh, missing his call. And this time he actually didn't go through with the plan of David totally. But let me show you. Let's go. First Chronicles 21. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Job and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Bathsheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. And Job answered the Lord, make, answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord, the king, as they, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why does the Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab, wherefore Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David, and all they of Israel were thousand, thousand, and a hundred thousand men that drew sword. And Judah was four hundred, three score, okay, all those were six. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. So Joab disobeyed King David. And so what happened? It says the devil, Satan, moved David to count the people of Israel. So David was being moved to trust in manpower instead of God. This is why the army general was like, since when are we counting the army? Why are you counting the people? You see, why are you counting the people? God has been winning battles for us. He knew it. Joab knew it. God had been winning for them battles against people more than them. He's like, now you're going to cause a trespass. He said to David, you're going to cause a trespass here. And David said, no, go and count them. But he was not sensitive to the Spirit of God. So in keeping your call, not missing your call, remain sensitive to the Spirit of God. And don't trust in man. Trust in God. Don't trust in man's backing. If you have people who say, okay, we're with you in this business. We're going to help you. We're going to give you this office and whatever. And you're like, oh, yes, people are there. Then the people pull away. Don't also pull back. Or don't try and count how many partners do I have? What's the tithe in the church? How many people are tithing? Who's my biggest partner? Who's the contributors? If we have to do something, you will start to do things based on what people, what you see in people. Like I love Reinhard Bonnke, he said, never budget with what's in your pocket. Budget with what is in God's pocket. Budget with God's finances, not your own. When you're doing something. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's showing you trust in the Lord, not trust in man. So David made a mistake here. And then he was in trouble. Right? Because verse number 10, the prophet Gad was sent now to David and he said, go and tell David saying, that says the Lord, I offer you three things, choose one of them. Right? Because God was displeased and he smote Israel. That's verse 7. Verse 8, David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech you, do away the iniquity of your servant for I have done foolishly. And the Lord spoke unto Gad, David's seer saying, go and tell David saying, that says the Lord, I offer you three things, choose one. 
one of them that I may do it unto you. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, choose either three years of famine three, or three months of being destroyed by your foes while the sword of your enemies overtakes you, or else three days of the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence of the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise yourself, what word shall I bring again on you? So it's like the Lord said, now you're going to have to reap what you sowed. There's punishment that has to come as a consequence of uh, this sin that you've done. But notice immediately David repented, said, I've sinned. He said, I've sinned. The first thing, verse 8, he said, I've done this thing. Now I beseech you, take away your iniquity of your servant. He said, I've sinned, take away my sin, Lord. You see, he didn't try and justify himself. King Saul tried to just himself, justify himself. Moses, we don't know. We, he was quiet. But Saul tried to justify himself. David quickly repented. So if you're missing something, missing your core, quickly get back in line. If you know you, you're meant to be doing this thing, but you're running too much with business, but you know you're meant to be called, you're meant to be preaching to young people or whatever, quickly get back into that. Quickly back, get back into that. Isn't it? Don't try and justify yourself. Oh, while I was doing the business, they called me on a Sunday. It's just, it was a blessing. It was a one Sunday, once off. Don't compromise. You'll be missing your call. Okay? Right? And then what did David say? Verse 13, And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now in the, into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. That is so powerful. David said, let me fall into God. God's let me rather be at the mercy of God than at the mercy of man. He was already declaring like what Moses would say, Lord, you are good for your mercy in Jewish people. This is what David was saying. That's why when we speak of mercy, there's the mercies of David. Something amazing, divine mercy. Read my book on mercy. Divine mercy, amazing stuff. Verse 14, right? So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel and there fell of Israel 7,000 men. And the people were dying. This is what we can see. But verse 16, and David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between heaven and earth. And then he said something, verse 17, And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray thee, O Lord, be my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not upon your people, that they should be plagued. So David was like, put the punishment on me. He was making himself a sacrifice. You was being like Jesus. So in your call, when you realize that your mistake is costing the people, pray, just pray to the Lord that He removes your reproach, your mistake, that the people not be affected. If you when you if and when you realize you've missed your call, just pray to the Lord that the people will be spared. That even if you you haven't been doing what you meant to be done, the people will be taken care of. That was the heart of David. That's why the, the Lord said, I've seen David. The son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. It's not, it's not because um, David was always right, but David always desired to do right. Like Romans 7 says, uh, Romans chapter 7 speaks to say that, that which I desire to do, I don't do, but I find myself doing something else. It says, what is it? It's sin dwelling in me, but we thank God for salvation in Jesus Christ. So the sin can be removed. It's not you doing the thing, it's the sin in you. So be like David. Quickly repent. If you see you've made a mistake, quickly repent and get back into line. And we see what happened from there. The Lord told David, go and buy this land. Uh, go, he didn't say go buy the land. He said go and offer sacrifices at such and such a place. And David went. When he wanted to offer the sacrifice, the guy, it was at a guy's business. His threshing floor. And then the, the man offered to give the king. But the king said, no, I must buy it for you, from you for a price. Because I can't give to God that which cost me nothing. You can see that. And when he did that, offer the sacrifice the plague was stopped okay so we can see david why the lord kept him his heart was pure and genuine even when he made a mistake and was wrong he quickly repented and said lord i have made the mistake have mercy upon me forgive me help me what should i do that's what we should do if you see you're missing your call or the lord corrects you to say you went the wrong way quickly like the prodigal son in luke uh, chapter 15 it says when he was out suffering and all that out there in the foreign land. It says, when he came to himself, he said within himself, how many of my father's servants have food enough and to spare and I'm perishing here with hunger. I will go to my father's house and say to my father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son, but make me as one of your hired servants. Then he ran, he went back to the father's house. The father accepted him back as a son. This is what you do. If you see you're missing it somewhere along the line, on whatever level, it might be great, it might be small, whatever it is, a miss is a miss. Sin is missing the mark. That's what sin is. So if ever we miss the mark, let's take the example of David. Because look at this, 
David fulfilled his call. Even when, when Jesus came, they said, the son of David. So David's call remained intact. His name even now, the city of David, the star of David is still on the flag of Jerusalem, which is called the city of David to this day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yet David did these things, but the Lord removed his sin, removed his reproach. And this was in the Old Testament, by the way. You understand that? Why? Because David quickly repented, if you see it. Every time when he made that mistake, he quickly repented. He quickly repented. He didn't trust in man. He was looking to the Lord. The last one which we saw, when he was moved by the devil to trust in him. Okay. So this is how uh, I just showed you these examples on how you can remain. So if God has called you into something, know your calling. I remember Kenneth E. e. Hagen, uh, the, the great father, father, uh, the great brother, brother, brother Hagen, uh, who he, he liked to be called brother, but uh, for me he was called as, a, as an apostle, right? And he said, um, the Lord told him he was focusing too much on his gift as a teacher. And he needed to also allow his gift, his calling as a prophet to function. So when you see such two big callings, it's an apostolic, uh, I believe it's an apostolic calling. And as you can see, he didn't slacken on that. And he also began to prophesy at the same time, teach and release prophetic words and all that. So it's understanding why, how is the balance, how has God called you and to function in that call. Don't exalt one because you enjoy it more than the other. Put the balance, isn't it? If you make a mistake, God is there to help you. So in, let's just wrap up and see again the missed calls. How did they miss it? Know your place. Remember King Saul, he didn't know his place. He tried to be a priest. He missed his call. He was totally misled. Quickly repent. He didn't repent. He tried to justify himself and he disobeyed God. He was after material things. Uh, he said he's going to sacrifice to the Lord. No. And he tried to please people. The people are the ones who moved him. He was moved by the people, not by God. And it caused him to be rejected. Moses, <laughs> he became angry with the people, disobeyed God, and he missed it. And he tried to exalt himself saying, shall we bring you water from the rock? David, he was ignorant, but he learned from his ignorance. He became wise and he carried the ark and moved on. And be at work. Remember, David was meant to be at war, but he was busy at home. So be busy with God, what God has called you to do and you will, not be, you will not miss your call and get into temptation. Don't be lazy. Be busy with what God has called you to do, isn't it? Like how you rea realize, I'm supposed to be busy fighting a battle, not at home with my wife, isn't it? And don't be moved by resources. Like Uriah was not moved by resources. The king gave him meat, gave him everything, said, go do this and enjoy. He said, no, I have a call out there. I'm meant to be fed. I'm meant to be fighting. It's not a time for me to be eating and getting drunk. And he said that to the king with all due respect, isn't it? Don't trust in man. David decided to count the people to see how many are with him. He was moved by the devil to do that. Don't trust in man. Trust in the Lord. Be quick to repent, like how David was quick to repent. In closing, let's just read that one on David. Acts 13 verse 22 says, And when he had removed him, that was King Saul, he raised up unto them David to be the king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. And David fulfilled all the will of God. He was not removed from his call, despite his mistakes. So that's how you can fulfill your call doesn't mean if you made a mistake or fell back or whatever that God has removed you. Remember the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. You are loved of the Lord. It is mercy that keeps you going. Hallelujah. I love you so much. I trust you are blessed by this word. Keep on listening to it over and over. Check the playlist so that you can go through each of the videos. You will understand your call of God and you will walk in your call as you go through that. Remember I bring testimonies here as well. Some throwbacks where we can learn from some great men and women of God from before. If you have a question, feel free to send it to me. If you're not yet saved, you need to receive Jesus in your life. Say the prayer to follow. Hallelujah. Share this with someone. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. I love you so much, but your Heavenly Father, He's called you and He loves you even more. Don't miss His calls. Answer His call and you'll be blessed. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you haven't received salvation in Jesus Christ, say this prayer with me right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I believe that you died for me and that you rose from the dead.
I declare that I am saved and born again. I am your child. In Jesus name. Amen. Subscribe and follow on social media platforms on YouTube, The Word of Truth Jason Paul Pullen, on all your podcasting platforms, The Word for Today with Jason Pullen, Spotify, Audible, Acast, Apple Podcasts and many more. You can also follow us on Instagram, The Word of Truth JC, you can follow us on Facebook, The Word of Truth JC, you can follow us on Twitter at the word of underscore truth three books available in the link below as well as on amazon.com if you'd like to partner with me you can go to paypal paypal.me forward slash jpj or via scroll jpj at gmail.com send an email the word of truth publications at gmail.com thank you for listening thank you for watching god bless you amen